Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we have a bit of um, an amalgamation of news for the Godot engine. There's been a bunch of announcements lately, but nothing kind of that merited its own video. So I've clumped them all together into a State of the Union for Godot kind of video. Now there's a couple of major things on the horizon. Now obviously we know that Godot 4 is actively being developed with Vulkan support, and it's actually progressing very, very well, but we've got nothing there yet. In fact, the one release that we're really waiting on is Godot 3.2. It last entered beta. Uh, in November the 6th. We haven't really had an update since, so we've been waiting for a while for this to happen. Generally, we go a couple of alphas, then we get into a beta, one or two betas, we get to a release candidate, and then a couple days later, we normally get the full release. And we're still waiting there, so there's not really much news on that front. I do stop to mention this particular post, though, because of this graphic. This is actually the graphic that I used for the title image. It is from uh, the gorgeous procedural and arcade shooter Infinistate. So just a heads up, that's where that graphic came from. And that is made with Godot 3 and its brand new PBR pipeline. So you can see some of the uh, graphic effects that we were getting in the new 3D engine in Godot. All right, so we're still waiting for Godot 4 and waiting for Godot 3.2. So what else is actually new? Well, we got a couple of really cool announcements. And this one is one of my favorites. There's been a, an update on the visual shaders in Godot. Um, a lot of these have been worked on over time. This is basically an announcement of the new changes, and this stuff should all be in Godot 3.2. And there's a ton of nice improvements. Now, there's improvements to both the shader language and the visual shader language. So we'll kind of go through that. First off, we now have constant support, which is nice. So you can have consts in your shader, uh, local arrays support, uh, varying arrays, like so, variant arrays, uh, do while loops, switch statements, uh, although these are limited to um, one... I think only the one back end, because they're not available on GLES 2 back end, by the way. Um, GLES 3 functions have been ported to GLES 2, all of the ones you see right there. Um, so those are the big changes to the scripting language. On top of that, the visual shader language, which again, I still intend to do a video on, stay tuned for that, uh, has a number of new features, including custom nodes that can be dropped in. You basically create them in script, write the code, and then you can drop that code in as a node. So you can see here, there's a script called worluv.gd, and it is dropped in as a node that takes inputs, has an output, and you can see the effect of it in real time right there. So you can actually create um, these, what are the wording here, custom nodes using the scripting language and drop them in. So you can create kind of like a, a library of shaders via drag and drop. There's actually a lot of drag and drop love that came to the visual scripting system. We also now have copy and paste, which is kind of nice. So if you've got a tree of nodes, you can copy and paste them around. Auto connections. This is very cool as well. So you do can drag off and it will automatically bring up the dialogue and create the appropriate kind of nodes for um, filter down to the kind of nodes you can create. So you can see them pulling off from the Albedo channel here and then the appropriate options are available. You pick one and it creates that node. So this is pretty standard for visual scripting. And when I use their visual scripting languages, I sort of just expect this behavior to be there and it isn't. Uh, so it's nice to see that that is. So basically just drag an empty pin off and the create new node uh, dialog pops up with the right filters to the type that have the right output. So that's definitely a cool new feature. Now I mentioned earlier on drag and drop got some love and this one's nice as well. You see he's dragging in three different PNG files and poof, it's creating the three texture inputs for your shader. Definitely going to be a time saver there. Uh, another nicety there. And then this one's also nice as well. You can now convert from visual shader to shaders. Um, and you can actually preview this in real time with something we'll see in just a second. Now this is unidirectional, uh, meaning you can sh create a shader from a visual shader, but once you've done that, you can't turn that shader back into a visual shader. So uh, there are some limitations there. And we have a generated shader preview. So the same kind of thing you can actually see in real time by clicking this little button right here, the code that is gonna be generated. So as you change things up, poof, the code is updated on the fly. Definitely some pretty sweet stuff there. Uh, we've got compare nodes, more powerful version of if. Uh, so you can see the options to compare over here and the, the parameters to compare by. Uh, we have global expressions. So you can type basically a code segment. So here you can see they've created this um, random function that's available as a global expression. And then they've got this expression node that you can use to actually call it like you're seeing right there. So there they are calling the random as part of the visual shader. So it gives you the ability to mix and match a little bit better with your shader programming, makes visual shader a little bit easier to work with. The is node uh, is used to check whether scalar variable is infinity or not a number. Uh, switches for scalars. Uh, so the same thing to so switch from before. So you've got multiple, multiple value switch statements to come in with. Default UV parameters for textures. Texture uniform, okay, 
Texture Uniform Tri Planner. Uh, note is available only in spatial shaders in the fragment function. Uh, parameter weights and position are overrides by default. It's a big complex function, as you can see in the generated code. Uh, sampler type, so it was recently added to help developers with handling texture samplers. Internally, it is a name reference to an existing uniform or predefined sampler input. And you can see it is a connection type, like so. Um, we've got, I think that's about it. Yeah, so those are the updates on shader. So the shader language in 3.2, both the visual and the built-in um, Godot-based shader language, uh, are getting quite a few nice improvements and a lot of quality of life stuff in there as well. So this is definitely some stuff to get excited about in here. And then we have, um, this one's kind of a bit of retro news actually. So there's a release candidate 3.1.2. So notice this is not 3.2, but this is the stable version of 3.11 is getting an update, uh, 3.12. Now, obviously, since this is not a development branch, you're going to look, if you go to the release notes or the changes of it, you're going to see it's almost entirely um, fixes and improvements and bug fixes and such. So hopefully that will be out soon. But there are downloadable versions of it available right here. Uh, definitely nice. And then finally, the most recently announced piece of news is some progress on C Sharp support. So C Sharp support has been kind of incrementally improving with each version of uh, Godot uh, after version three. Uh, we've got some nice improvements going on here. Uh, we've got WebAssembly support. So this is actually quite cool. So if you are targeting the browser and you develop using C Sharp, you now have this option available here. Uh, right now, uh, the JIT compiler is not available. There are two ways to run code, Mono's IL interpreter and AOT compilation. Right now, Godot uses the formula. Uh, AOT will be quicker. Uh, Godot does not support AOT on WebAssembly just yet, but it will be coming soon. But if you write your code using C Sharp and you want to target WebAssembly, you will be able to because of this code, which is kind of cool. You can actually see it running in the browser right here. Oh, actually, this is the project. All right, so you can see a screenshot of that project running in the browser. Uh, in here. So uh, that's cool. Got the ability to target uh, WebAssembly coming up. And we have an add-in for Visual Studio for Mac and Mono Develop. It makes uh, development and launching directly from uh, Visual Studio for Mac, which is Mono Develop. It, Microsoft and their branding has been very strange on that level. Um, this is not, again, Visual Studio, and this is not Visual Studio Code. This is Visual Studio Mac, uh, a version of Mono Develop slash Xamarin Studio. So don't mix that up. But if you are a um, uh, Mono developer, there's some nice new features and functionality there for, for you Mac people out there anyways. Um, uh, as mentioned earlier on, AOT's compilation support. This is basically turning C Sharp code into just straight out binaries. Uh, it, it, so that it doesn't require the runtime or anything there. Uh, but that is a work in progress right now. And we've got some d discussions of what is coming soon. Obviously, iOS support is uh, the next thing. So we've got Android and we've got WebAssembly now for C Sharp. So once iOS is in there, I think you will have full blown C Sharp support uh, across the board. Among other things is more IDE extensions, starting with Visual Studio and later Visual Studio Code. So in addition to, again, Visual Studio for Mac, uh, they are working on similar extensions for Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code that are coming in the future, as well as AOT compilation improvements. And again, with AOT compilation, it should be trans pretty transparent to you as a developer. Uh, but what you are seeing is pretty much um, better performance as a result. And that is a requirement. AOT compilation is actually a requirement for shipping on on the iOS platform. So uh, to go along with iOS, they're going to need to get AOT working. And there's no real technical reason for that. It's just Apple being Apple. Um, so yeah, those are the big things in the news. And once again, I'm actually pulling all of these announcements from the Godot blog news tab. Uh, so you see those are the major ones we just captured right there. If we go back a little bit further. I actually did a video on the uh, code of conduct announcements and I don't want to, I don't want to pick that scar anymore. And then we've also got ongoing uh, announcements of what is going on with Vulkan. And as I mentioned earlier on, Vulcan has made a ton of progress. It is looking very, very interesting. And it looks like it will be uh, Godot 4.0 will be a, with us sooner rather than later, which is definitely nice. And it should have a much nicer and more performant 3D renderer. So there have been a lot of updates there. It's just this was some time ago. So I'm going to wait for the, the next major release for uh, Vulcan on Godot um, 4.0, you know, pre-beta or pre-alpha, whatever you want to call it. And then maybe I will actually do a video of showing Vulcan in action as well. Uh, there hasn't been an update on this in close to uh, coming up on half a month now, two or three weeks. So there should be another update soon, I should imagine. And when that happens, I'll download it, get, play around with it, and maybe let you guys see it hands on. So yeah, that is what is going on with Godot. You want to check that out, you just go up to godotengine.org news, or of course, just stay tuned to this channel where I summarize most 
activity that happens in Godot. And sometimes, like I said, if it's a little bit minor, I'll just throw it together in one video like this one. All right, let me know what you think of this video format and these developments in general. I got to say, of all of the things here, you know, the, the C-sharp improvements are definitely nice things to see. Uh, WebAssembly is definitely a cool thing to see, but it's the improvements to shaders and visual shaders that really impress me in this batch and the thing that I'm most looking forward to in Godot 3.2. Let me know what you think of all this, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.